What's going on investors, AK from Fallible here. And today I wanna to talk about the types of returns that you're getting with your investment strategy. And by that I mean, are you generating alpha or are you harvesting beta? You'll know what I'm talking about by the end of this video. But the goal is to give you a framework and a new way to look at your strategy and your portfolio construction so that you can boost your returns. All right, so your returns at their highest level can be split up into three components. You get returns from cash, beta, and alpha. Your cash return is obviously what you get from holding cash. and what you get for holding cash is determined by the central banks or the Federal Reserve because they set the interest rates. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I got a whole playlist about the Fed and how they set the interest rates and how that impacts the economy. I'll link to that playlist above, so make sure you check it out. But yeah, the cash return is what you get when you have your money in the bank and you're earning interest on that. And I know you're probably thinking like, what the hell, AK? There is no return on cash. I put money in my bank and I get nothing. And yeah, that's true right now, but a long, long time ago, way back when, you actually used to get a return for putting your money in the bank. And when we had higher interest rates, it was actually a decent return. So it was a legit part of your strategy. Don't worry, don't worry, that time will come again. So just keep that in mind. After cash, we have beta, which is the returns you get from just buying and holding either stocks or bonds. You collect something called a risk premium for just being in the asset. And that makes sense, right? Because either stocks or bonds are both more risky in cash, so you need to be paid off to actually be in them. If you're making the same thing you're making while you're holding cash, then why would you ever invest in it? It wouldn't be worth the risk. Hence, you get paid the risk premium. So an example of this is just investing in an index fund. By doing that and just being passive, you're harvesting beta. Now, a lot of people for some reason are ashamed of saying that they're beta harvesters. It's like if you harvest beta, all of a sudden you're a beta male. It's like you suck as a person and nobody likes you. Everybody just wants to be an alpha generator, which is something we'll talk about next. But what I gotta say is that there's nothing to be ashamed of in harvesting beta. Because guess what? Even though it sounds easy just collecting that risk premium, it actually isn't. Because you still got to deal with volatility. Remember, you got to buy and then hold, which means holding through all the ups and downs the market throws at you. And we know that's the toughest part. I mean, just in the last 18 years, the market has been cut in half twice. So would you be able to sit there easily collecting beta while your nest egg gets cut by 50%? Yeah, it's not easy. And a beta harvesting strategy is pretty decent. Since 2007, the S&P 500 has returned an average of 7.2% a year. And that's great. But do you know what the return of your average investor is over the last 30 years? It's 3.8%. And you could look at that same number over the last five or 10 years and it'll still be underperforming the market. So most people aren't even able to harvest all that beta. And again, it's because of the volatility. It's tougher than it seems. So please don't have that beta shame that all these people seem to have. If you're able to successfully harvest beta, then you're doing a great job. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. And now we have alpha returns. Alpha is the reason why those beta people are just ashamed of themselves. It's all that alpha envy that they have. Because the alpha guys, they're just the cool guys. You know, they're the hedge fund managers. They're the Bobby Axelrods. Everybody wants to be an alpha generator. And what alpha is, is the return you can make over beta, which is basically the return you're making over whatever benchmark you're tracking. So if the S&P made 10% and you make 15%, you generated 5% alpha, congratulations. But it is not easy to generate alpha. Outperformance is very difficult. You gotta have a better strategy than everybody else. And that's why the people that are actually able to generate alpha, they make the big bucks. And actually even the guys making the big bucks are barely able to generate alpha. They're not even able to harvest all the beta they should be harvesting. The data shows that 90% of mutual funds and active managers fail to beat the market over five and 10 year periods. And these are the professionals. They're not getting the alpha nor are they getting all the beta. You gotta remember it's a tough game. But now that you understand these return terms, terms of beta, alpha, and cash, they should help you set your strategy. So say for example, you're in a market environment where the return on cash is actually pretty good. So if you see that, an example of what you can do is collect that interest on the cash and then shuffle some of that money into some big bets. So you could potentially buy out of the money options on some big macro themes that you have a lot of conviction. And those bets will create the alpha that will boost your returns over everyone else. And that's actually what a lot of the macro greats like Druck and Soros used to do. They'd have a lot of their money collecting interest and then they'd use some of those returns to bet really big. And you know, that's how they would get the insane returns. But they were taking advantage of that cash and beta return to produce that alpha return. But obviously if the cash rate is zero, it doesn't work. Another example could be a market environment where a pure beta strategy looks great. So for example, after a market crash, the best idea might be allocating your money to an index because during that comeback period, it's gonna make the best returns. But in a different environment where stocks are more expensive and there's low beta, it might not make sense to do that. In that environment, 
it might make more sense to make more tactical alpha oriented bets. So having this idea of the alpha versus beta versus cash return will help you construct your portfolio in the right way for the right environment. And that will absolutely help your returns. So how is your portfolio structured? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for notifications of new videos. We publish three a week, all markets and business related. So subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Stay fallible out there. Bye.